One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. solos to the classic bluegrass song Man of Constant Sorrow. The song was originally done in the key of F, but I moved it up to the key of G to make it a little more friendly for beginners, maybe a little bit more jam friendly. I got two solos, one a very basic version, and the second solo is going to work on adding some basic bluegrass ornaments. So we're going to add some double stops, some slides, and some drone strings. I'm going to break down both solos note for note and then show you a bunch of backup stuff you can do on this song. So how you do basic two finger chords, how do you do bluegrass chop chords to this song. I'm going to break it all down. Alright, here we go. Here's Man of Constant Sorrow in the key of G. Alright, let's start breaking down this beginner version to Man of Constant Sorrow. Let me play the first four measures and then I'll break it down. Do that a couple times. One. One more time. So let's start by looking at the left hand fingers we should use for this song. So we're going to use our ring finger of our left hand up on the fifth fret of the D string. So any of the fives on this song, any fifth frets, we're going to use our third finger on this song. Any of the third frets, whether on the A string, D string, or E string, we're going to use our middle finger of our left hand. And any of the ones, we're going to use our index finger of our left hand. So let's just go up on the A string to start and practice doing those three notes. First fret, third fret, and fifth fret. And what I want you to practice is keeping all your, your left hand down if you can. See how I'm not lifting these ones up when I put the next one down? That'll really help you practice stretching. And a lot of times in this song, we're going to be going back to those notes. So don't lift them up because you're going to be going right back to those. So practice that at first. And that might take a little bit of time if you're a beginner. Um, just practice stretching out. Then I'm going down to the D string. And you can do the third fret. Now I'm going to go up to the E string. And we're not going to use all those notes in this song, but that's just good practice stretching. So it's ones, threes, and fives. Those are my frets. First fret, third fret, and fifth fret. And I'm using fingers one, two, three. Index, middle, and ring finger of my left hand. Okay, so let's stick to that rule on this song and that'll make playing the song a lot easier. Okay, so let's look at the pickup to the song. So we're going to start on the 5th fret of the D string on beat 2. So I recommend counting beat 1 and then we're going to do 3 down strokes. We're going to play the 5th fret on the D string, 1st fret on the A string, and then 3rd fret on the A string. So it's 2, 3, 4, 3 quarter notes in a row after beat 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's kind of our tempo uh, setter. It's almost similar to like, you know, when a rock band, the drummer hits one, two, three with their sticks. That's basically what we're doing here. We're setting the tempo of the song. It's not actually part of the melody in this case. We're just using that to basically set the tempo of our solo. So we're going one, two, three, four. Remember, keep your left hand down if you can. Then we're going to go up to the fifth fret of the A string and do some down and up picking. So we're going to hit the B1 as a quarter note. And then we're going to do down ups the rest of the measure. So two and three and four and. So six down ups. So you do. Let's do that a couple times. There's a uh, quarter note on beat one. So one. One, two and three and four and. Now measure three, we're going to do four quarter notes back down those same notes. Fifth fret twice. And then back to the fifth fret on the D string. And we're going to do down, down, up, down. 
and then one more down up. Kind of a fiddle shuffle rhythm there. We went down, down, up, down, down, up. That's a good way to fill out a measure. Um, same with measure two. The melody is just a really that long note on the fifth fret. And we're filling that up with some down and up picking to basically fill up that me uh, melody a little bit more. So let's play those first four measures. One. Let's do it one more time. One. following the pick directions below the tab. The staples are downs and the V's are ups. Um, those down strokes, especially in measure three, will actually help you play that timing. Help you slow you down a little bit there so you don't do it too fast. Okay, one more time. One. Now here's measure five. We're gonna hit that fifth fret on the D string one more time. We're gonna do four quarter notes. So fifth fret, third fret up on the A string with your second finger, first fret on the A string, and then back to that fifth fret. You can keep that fifth fret down the whole time if you can. If you have to lift it up, you, you can as well, but it'd be good practice to keep that down. But if you have to lift it up a little bit, that's okay. Again, use the downstrokes there to, to um, slow yourself down. Make sure you don't play those too fast. So let's do four and five together. So it's. Now measure six back to that third fret on the A string. And we're going to do that down, down, up picking again. So. Same timing as measure two. So it's one, two, and three, and four, and. Let's do that a couple times. One, two, and three, and. One more. One, two, and three, and four, and then four quarter notes again. Third fret on the A string, up to the fifth fret on the A string, and then first fret on the high E twice. So measure seven sounds like this. One more time. Let's play six and seven together. So it's Now measure eight back to the fifth fret on the A string. And then we're gonna do that down up picking, same as measure two, same exact timing and notes. So one, two, and three, and four, and. So remember what we're doing there is filling up that melody. It's a long note and we're filling it up with down and up picking, so. And then measure nine is